Okay, my outstandingly wonderful friends, this is Roger once again, and we are going to be looking at the ancient pyramids at Giza and what appears to be a map of what they consider to be Babylon, which I believe is Cairo now, but I'm not 100% certain of anything at this point. This is the Nile River. And these appear to be pyramids built on what appear to be tree trunks. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. Now, let's do a little investigation about this, because I've always said the pyramids were not built from the ground up. They were built up and then stripped down to create the pyramids. Or they could be this. They could be dragon scales. We're going to be looking at that in a microscope here. Uno momento, because these are that's a, that's a possibility. This is exactly what <laughs> a pyramid looks like. All right, so I, and I can also account for the the uh, passageways down and this, the layering and all that stuff biologically, l quite likely. So let's see if I can or I can't. But we're going to be looking in the microscope and we're going to be checking out dragon scales and then we're going to be talking about could they be tree trunks and what, or could they be something else? There's a several different possibilities here, but I'm not seeing them as pyramids stacked on top of each other that they labored all day long to put these blocks, of, you know, well, day long for years and years and years, obviously. Um, I believe it was just the other way around. They stripped it down until they had what they wanted. Then they filled in to make very nice flat surfaces on the outside. And I have seen that in Brian Forrester's videos that show around the edges where they have the nice flat smooth. If you take and look at the block, if it was stripped away, it's all jaggedy inside because they poured it from the, it wasn't actually a block of stone it was almost like concrete they call it uh, geopolymers which they ground up flesh and everything else i'm not kidding you and it's it's basically that type of thing and they turn it into concrete a lot of a lot of thinking to do here all right the reason i say that things are ground up they these this is ground up flesh and that is from a red area where there's a lot of bloody tissue. And this was from an arterial area where there was a lot of the black blood. Now watch this. Um, let me just turn off the sound so that I don't get too loud here. Now watch what happens here. This is what you see in China. They're showing people being ground up like this. And to make the wall in China, I believe, was what they were doing. Because they, they know now that you add blood to concrete and it makes it stronger <laughs> and that's what they're doing grinding up bodies now I also have this is this is tendon and fleshy stuff and I'm going to show you what my countertop looks like there's my countertop it's ground up tendon with little bits and pieces of blood here and there the black and the red blood and that's the only piece of metal I could found in the found in the countertop basically and this is it's it's homogenous all ground up and it's basically the same as this stuff right there it's the same thing they were grinding people up around the world to extract the metals i believe because when, once you get in and look at it there's no metals left in so this is spam ground up meat same stuff <laughs> I'm, i i can't tell you this now this is natural that is natural body parts and they are all body parts i'm sorry that's just we got to get over this and start to understand the earth is really biological case closed you start looking at these things these oh that's just sediment and this is that no i can go in there and show you where the arteries and veins and all the things that are biological this is not just sediment runoff of something just like the pyramids are not what they appear to be either you see this this is from brian forrester's and he's asking questions. Why is this like this? The casing stones are all a different color, and they're poured. Nobody chiseled that to fit in amongst this. These are all lopsided and f crazy looking edges, and they pulled the stones away that made the perfect, you know, uh, facade to go up and nice and smooth, and it looked fabulous, yes. But that's ground up flesh. 
that they turned back into geopolymers. Now, they might have added dirt and stone. I don't know what they did, but I'm going to tell you right now, that is exactly like my countertop. <laughs> it's all ground up, just like this spam. Just think about it as a... Just use a little bit of common sense. This is as... Nobody carved that to fit in amongst these little deficiencies. These were all poured in place. They used these stones because they were so flawless because they were just homogenous mixtures of of flesh basically so these were easy to cut and, and chisel down and make nice fat flat slabs so they stole them all off the edges that's why they're not there anymore all right so here's these casing stones and this scaling is what's called rapid oxidation. Instead of leaving the forms on long enough, they took them off too quick. And this oxidized and made literally a skin on top of the fleshy material that was underneath. These are all poured in place. Above that, you get into all this, you know, um, layered stuff. But the, I have the same sort of thing in, this is a pyramid too. That's just nothing more than a pyramid. And it has the same sort of layering, and I mean they are fine, fine, fine layers. You can't see it that well, you know, um, but if you look at it in a microscope, you can see they're very, very finely layered. Now, in addition, this is a dragon scale, and this is the bottom of the scale where it sits into the next scale. So it's held with this tab, and this is some kind of a dragon or some kind of a lizard scale, and it's pretty good size. <laughs> now, I... In addition to having all these little layers, you see them? I could find the blood. That's where the blood supply was, right there. And that runs down to that blood supply down there. And I think that might have been the king's chamber or the queen's chamber, what they call it. They have these ramps going down here and there. They're blood vessels, in my my opinion, if it was a, if it was a, uh, a dragon scale. But it, one way or the other, it was some kind of biology, I think. I could be wrong, but I've seen the inside of the pyramids, and they are biological as well. You know, they, you, they've dressed up a lot of it, but you, I can see where it was biological. Same thing with Petra. It was made and carved from the flesh of a creature. Let's just look at Petra real quick. Now, I don't think I showed you this map yet, but this is the Nile River here, and that's the Giza Plateau where all of the um, pyramids are. See them right there? Now, I found an old map. I think I, maybe I did show you this, but I found an old map that shows the pyramids, and they look like they're built on top of what looks to me like tree stumps. Now, that's the way I would take this if I was just looking at it quickly. And you can also see that either that's a sphinx or something's going on there. Now, I'm not sure where this map came from. I know it's supposedly Babylon. Um, which apparently now is Cairo, I would assume, but I'm not sure of that either. <laughs> All I can tell you is that I'm seeing a ton of these tree stump looking things. Why? And what does all this writing say? Because there's, there's things that are numbered here and, and you know, that are some kind of um, discussion about these things, like number 17, I don't know what that refers to. Um, but these appear to be, well, they are pyramids. Now, were they stripped down from trees or were these the feet of giants? Because I'm going to tell you something right now. Devil's Tower is the foot of a giant and it could easily be stripped down to form a pyramid. And you don't see trees being, the tree stumps, very well preserved. They look, a lot of things look like tree stumps, but they're actually the feet of giants. And I'm sorry, that's just a fact. And there was dragons here, too. And that's why I say, drag, and these could be dragon scales. He's, oh, Roger, oh, a big, big dragon like that. Well, let me tell you how, because that's not even a big dragon. All right, if you think you can't make a pyramid out of a dragon scale, we were over here in this little tiny spot. This is a dragon. This is the head of the dragon. It runs all the way across North Africa. And yes, it is. It is a dragon. Don't tell me it doesn't because it is. And I will show you his head right here. 
All right, now pay attention, take your time. That's the bumpy nose they have, the big nose. Comes down, that's his back, it runs all the way down. This is the throat. Follow it all the way down the throat. Boom, 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 boom. And then somebody gashed his throat and he bled out in the desert. All of this stuff is bloody bleed off from a dead, decaying carcass. Look at it carefully. Talk to any coroner, crime scene investigator, anybody that knows anything about how bodies decompose, that's it. Now, I showed you the throat runs all the way down. This is the gash right here. And I'm going to show you something on an ancient map. Because they knew about these things long before we, well, now we just figured it out now. Nobody's known about this uh, since I have no idea when the last person knew about it. But that's a giant fish being attacked by the giant dragon. You have Google Earth. I'm not going to belittle it, belabor this. It runs all the way across North Africa. And this is his tail. Of course, there's little legs coming down. This is the tail, also decaying stuff running off. And these are the dragon scales of the tail. You see this? They're virtually exactly the same as the ones I have. <laughs> it almost looks very, very similar. Anyway, there, this, this was a gigantic creature. So we need to reconsider all the things we thought about our ancient past, geology, you know, <laughs> history. Where did we come from? This is, these are big, big, big questions. Big questions. And this was an ocean. This was the Sahara Ocean, and this is Atlantis. I'm going to show you a map in a second. Back up everything I'm saying. This was Atlantis. It collapsed. The Straits of Atlantis was right here. You see it right there? They said it was outside the Straits. Everybody thought it was outside the Straits of Gibraltar. It was outside the Straits of, Atl of the Sahara. And when the Sahara, or when Atlantis collapsed, everything ran out and created the Cape Verde Islands. It piled up here and then it swished off to the sides. And this, you could see it. I mean, a, a five-year-old that plays in a mud box can see that. He said, oh, yeah, yeah, I did that yesterday. It was fun. It collapsed Atlantis. All right, this is the most detailed map I can find. And this shows the Red Sea over here. And guess what else it shows? The dragon. This great, this, this you know, gold-looking scaled looking creature is the dragon runs all across North Africa and here is his throat cut right there just as I told you and in the ancient text I think it's the Bible or one of them says he maybe it's the Quran he will cut the dragon's throat with his great and mighty sword and here's Atlantis right here there's Atlantis right underneath just as I showed you and here's the boats coming into Atlantis to dock and do whatever they do and um, there's all kind of writing on these maps. This, these are very, very detailed. And this is what they knew about the world and who ran it, who was the kings of all these different regions. And even like uh, upside down up in here is Iceland. They had the same thing. They had all kinds of monsters up in Iceland. I think these represent monsters and things. I don't know. A lot to look at. Anyway, I, I look for supporting evidence. That's pretty good supporting evidence to show that the dragon, they knew about it. So, I don't know. There's just so much to consider now. It's, it's really, it's, it's kind of hard to process. And even now, after 10 years of digging deep into this, I'm still having a hard time with it, so don't feel bad. Okay, these are the dragon scales on that gigantic dragon in the desert. Now, I have a scale from here, from a little tiny one, and it's right there in the microscope. Now, I have it sort of on its side so we can see the blood supply. I have to turn off the, can the lights so that it'll show up here in the, in the camera screen. Hold on. Let's come up here. See this here? That's blood. That is a, 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 um, an artery. Whenever you see the red, it's an artery. Now, I'm going to just smack it with a little bit of water. Just a taste of water. Watch how it quickly, usually, will hydrate and turn almost like blood again. You 
see? See how red that is? Now I'm going to play around with the light a little bit because when you play around with the light you can see a lot of stuff. Now you see the black spots over there? That's the vein blood. This one here, the red one is the artery. Ooh, a little too much. <laughs> All right. Well, you can see the, the, that's artery blood and that is literally the artery that runs down the side of the scale. Now I'm going to go to the underneath. Now let's come down and look at where we are right now. Hold on, let me turn the lights on. Alright, here's where we are right now. Where am I here? Alright, here we go. That's where we are. Alright, so here's where I just sprayed the little water on. Alright, and that's the pyramid or the scale. Now, where does that run to? Where does that blood vessel go? It has to go somewhere. Well, here's where it goes. It goes right over to here. This is the underside of the scale. And normally, you're going to have dirt around this whole thing, and you're just going to be seeing the bump sticking up. Well, underneath where the dirt would be, it's going to be where the blood vessel is, right on the side, and then it runs down to the other side here. Now we're going to look at that in the microscope. Let me set it up. It takes a minute here, old man. Okay, so we are on the bottom of the scale looking at that blood vessel right there. Now let me turn the lights off and we'll get up here top and take a look at it as the light starts to foam itself in. Now that is blood and it's also got gold. And I believe that's what they were doing is mining the gold from under the pyramid. Uh, under the um, pyramids. There it is right there. Now, that is, that's blood. <laughs> it's blood. Now, I believe this over here is where the gold is. We're going to be going right down close and taking a real close look at it in a minute. But that is where the blood supply runs. And um, let's go a little in and out of this here. See if I can home in close. Here, let me hit it with a little more light. Hold oh, on. You see? See these little tiny holes? These are all blood vessels. And I, this is gold up in here. I'm going to show it to you. I think that's what they were doing. I think this is gold here, too. Anyway, I'll show it to you real, real close up in a second. All right, this is really close up. Now, you see these little spots here? All these are chunks of gold. They're little tiny bits of gold, and they're all over, and they come around the blood. You see, this is where the blood came out and ran out. And all those little flakes are gold. Now, if you were up, and they're, they're, they're obviously more where the blood is, where the, like right up in here. You see where the blood comes out? That's where the, the gold primarily collects. Now, if you were in a giant, you know, this is tiny, very small, but you, the, the scale is very small. You go scale that up and that's going to be the size of a house of gold and they're all over the place every one of these is a little tiny piece of gold all those little special ones I, I have it on a special uh, not a special setting but it's on a color on a, a frequency of light that displays the gold very well you can go different colors of light and pick up different shades of things. Let me see if I can change it around a little bit. You see how you were in a dark area and the gold lights up it's like a spotlight. Now, as you get brighter and brighter, you lose a lot of the details, but the gold really, not a gold is showing up as gold gold. Before it was just showing up as a brilliant white place, but this is all the, the blood. All that blood running out. And every one of these spots is gold. And there's a lot of it. If you if you dig around, you can find a lot of it here and there. And that's where the blood runs out at the bottom of the scale. So is it a scale? Is it a tree? Is it a foot? <laughs> Good question, Roger. Good question. Let's see what if it would look like if it was a foot. 
All right, let's look and see what it would look like if there was tendons wrapped around these bones, which there would be if it was a living creature. And um, now let's take a look at Devil's Tower. Look at Devil's Tower now, which is a foot. Okay, my All friend. right, let me explain to you what you're seeing here. We, it, we saw it wrapped around. This is tendon, and tendons go up from your ankle area up to your calf where the muscle takes over. The wrinkle zone right here is because when tendons get snapped, there's a, there's a, they're under tension and they just snap back. And there's a wrinkle zone right around the top and it break, it's what's called an abrupt transition. And I've shown this hundreds of times. My friends, you saw the bone structure comes down. And just think about this. These are the heel, like, like at the very back of the heel. It goes forward this way. It wraps around your, you feel your own little ankle. You get the same things, bones on both sides of the ankle, and it just stuff comes and wraps around it. That's what you're seeing. And as it comes out here, let me see if I can find another spot, makes sense. Well, here, you see, this is the wrinkle zone. That's the wrinkle zone, and here the stuff is wrapping around a bone ball. And it, 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 there's a wrinkle zone at the top and one at the bottom. And I think I show the actual. Well, I show a lot of my own stuff, CAT scans and DNA reports and all that stuff. And these are the this, these were all these balls are all over uh, all over the earth, and they're from giant creatures. I mean, there's giant creatures. That's just the way it is. Anyway. All right, there's Devil's Tower, and the guy fell over backwards, and this is all the fleshy stuff. And you can actually see the rib cross sections. I don't know if I show it in this. This was a while back. But you see, here he was. He fell over backwards. That's why he had all this really dense-looking green stuff, because it's growing in body and blood tissues. Anyway. That's what it would look like, and they could bring this down into a um, a pyramid. That wouldn't be a problem. Okay, remember I told you the red blood grows a real green stuff. Look, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the red blood, and this is really I could I found like his ribs and all kinds of stuff laying back here. Apparently, fell over backwards, boom, and ended up dying right here. And this is probably where the heart and lungs and stuff, where the really heavy-duty bloody tissue was. And that grows stuff like crazy. You could buy blood meal and bone meal, you know, to grow plants with. And the blood meal makes things grow like absolutely amazing for leafy green stuff. The bone meal is for, for um, flowering plants. But the, the uh, uh, yeah, the blood meal is for the... Um, green vegetation phase of growing plants. You want to see something cool? You know those slabs that are at Baalbek, the giant pregnant lady stone? This is exactly the same things. They glue into muscles. This is muscle. This is the band of glue that glues these tendons. And they're just exactly square tendons, exactly like the pregnant lady stone. And if you look at the pregnant lady stone, you'll find at the end of it, it's flat as a pancake, which this is too. But at the end, there'll be these little blood holes going down the center to feed the, you know, uh, biology of it. And um, there it is right. See there, this is it. And it comes up into this glue. Let me just play this forward. This was an old video a long time ago I did this, but you see the, where it glues in and they step off because each one of them is independent from the others. So this one can move separate from that and separate from this. You see how it just stepped off a little bit here? You'll see the same thing at, um, at Baalbek. When you go and you'll see, they'll, they, you can see they're removed out of sections just like this. And... Um, then as you move down through the glue, on the other side of the glue is where the tendon wraps right in, like a, right in like weaves, right into, to attach. You see it? Watch it. See up there? Look at this. This will blows my mind. Every, they see them? I'm showing it weaving right in. And that's what it weaves in, and then it turns into muscle. So you go from tendon to glue to muscle. Tendon to glue to muscle. 
not something. And the and the size of them is just astronomical. And here here's the see it wrapped right around them. This is very easy to see here. That's the muscle fiber wrapped right into that glue strip. And then on the other side, a glue strip is a tendon. It's, isn't that something? And then as you go out, you'll see a couple of abrupt transitions. Now, I talked about the abrupt transitions before. There's one right there. See, it's like, this goes back six, seven years ago. I did this video. That's before I started using my feathers. I did have a feather. See, that's the pointer I used to have. <laughs> so this is a video of a video, and now I'm doing a video of the video of the video of the video. Here's another abrupt transition, see it? Breaks right off there. That's why they flat as a pancake. These are your feed the blood, and then there's another tra abrupt transition right out there. I got this thing down. Ten years I've been working on this, and a lot, not just a little bit, every day, all day, just about. You know, when I say I've been working on this every day, just about, I've been working on science things just about every day because when I, after I realized all this was just so rejected and so obvious and I could prove everything I was saying. I have DNA tests and CAT scans and, you know, specimens are coming out of my ears. And, and I realized that academia was literally a fraud. So I looked into all of the other things they were claiming. There's nothing, not a single one is correct. Nothing. No theoretical anything is true. Physics is completely wrong, and they're admitting it now. They say, we need new physics, and we're trying to figure it out. We're looking for the muon, we're looking for this. I found it all. I, sure, I can show all of that to them. And Don Lincoln from Fermi Lab refuses to engage. Absolutely. Dis dis I won't you take one minute, he told me, to look at the stuff you have because you're not peer-reviewed. Even though I can produce the evidence that supports every word I say, that's not right. And neither is any of the things from Yale and Harvard or any of the rest of them. They're just, they're not doing their job. They're fiduciary failures. And if they want to come back to me and say, oh, you can't say that about us. Well, tell me why I can't. If you refuse to discuss evidence that scientifically supports the fact that you're not correct, then you're not an educator. You're not a teacher. You're not a learner. You're not any of those things. And you are just an abuser of, of kids at this point or, or anybody that's... That, pays you money to be told what they have to say or failed. I'm, I'm, I'm done with that kind of stuff, and you should be too. If you're not, I don't know where you live. I wouldn't want to be around you a lot. Like I said, I think we can get free energy right now. As far as I'm concerned, Fermi Lab is failure lab. This is light. This is light accelerating. Not supposed to be able to do that. And this is light, which is the particle. And this is the particle we see accelerating right up here, being pulled out of the wave because we created a cheap little venturi, almost nothing. And it explodes here. The particle, the black and white particle I just showed you, divides into the black and the white separate. The white turns into a shower, the black just rolls away. And that's exactly what CERN and Fermilab want to see for what they call the muon, which is the, the golden particle of the world. And here it is right here, after the explosion. All right? They want to see the muon, and they want to see the electron shower. There's the muon, there's the electron shower. Doom. It came in as the black and white ball attached together. They divided. That's fission, that's fusion. Physics is an absolute joke. And, and Fermilab is, a, as far as I'm concerned, complete failure. Don Lincoln refuses to engage. I can show exactly what I started with light. I didn't start with protons. I could see the particles, and I could see them divide. This is nuclear energy. That is so much energy that we should be able to harvest it as free energy. Look at the increase in value. Back here, you couldn't even see it hardly. Here, it looks like an atomic bomb because it is.